Hello and welcome into another edition of State of the Sun Devils alongside Jesse Morrison and Damon Allred. I'm Jeremy Schnell. We're getting ready for the Utah game for Arizona State football. Friday at 7.30 p.m. Nothing like Friday Pac-12. Oh, Big 12 matchup. Friday Night <laughs> that Lights. that purposeful this time? Or did yes, you, okay. that was purposeful yeah, this it time. It is a Pac-12 you know, matchup, you know, if you're talking about the last <laughs> 10 years, whatever. The game will be on ESPN 620 AM and um, 98.7 FM HD2, as well as the Arizona Sports app. Tim Healy, Jeff Van Raphorst, and Kevin Turner will be on the call. Don't forget our friend of the program, Jeff Munn, will do the pregame show at 5 p.m. I would like to give a quick round of applause for Tim Healy, who had a successful procedure. Yay, Yay Tim and Healy. We said Jeff he... for filling in very well. Yes, yeah, he... and to and to our good friend uh, Luke Lipinski for filling in yes, pregame. Yes, for filling in for, for Jeff. Yes. Great job there. Um, ESPN will have the game as well. They're on the call, which means they are in person. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. This is the big uh, Friday night crew so uh anish shroff andre where paul carcatera they have they have like the big friday night game so this is like the premier friday night game in the minds of you know espn two four and one teams utah coming off of a bye week they just lost to arizona before the bye week uh who's their quarterback we don't know uh is it cam rising is it uh zach wilson's brother that's what they call him right Isaac Wilson, he has a name. Do, do they do they just go to practice and they're like, "Hey, Zach Wilson's brother's here." No, his name is Isaac. Um, Zach Wilson isn't looked too fondly on by Utah fans, I don't think. Interesting. No, because he's a BYU, BYU kid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, coming off of by Kenny's, uh, the, Kenny talked about them in practice uh, after practice. What have you been seeing from what Kenny Dillingham has been saying this week about Utah, Damon? Well, as far as the the short week, the the prep has been obviously much different, and that starts with losing their their main walkthrough that they like to have before games. He said that they instead of having like a full walkthrough, what they've done is instead of they have like a full practice and a full practice and a walkthrough, they've had a half practice, half walkthrough, half practice, half walkthrough, and then they'll move on tomorrow to a uh, last minute prep. Uh, what you got? Oh, no, no, no. He no. was scratching his face. I was That's scratching what Jesse my does. face. Yeah. There's no bug this time, though. There's no bug. If you yeah, want to go I watch just... our post-game podcast from the other day, there was a bug flying yeah, around. But yeah, yeah. So, so Utah, the, the talk has been, obviously, Kenny has mentioned Kyle Whittingham is like a, a golden standard for how he likes to build his program, how he wants ASU to be built. And he's looking at uh, Friday as kind of a, a measuring stick of where they are in terms of building up that program to be in Utah's image, so to speak. Jesse, you look at Utah all the time and Kyle Whittingham and what they've created as kind of like a a, a kind of, I don't want to say stepping... St- uh, what, what, what? It's a, Utah is a blueprint for what yes, I think a lot blueprint. of teams That's should That's the word do. I was looking for. It's not always getting the best recruits. It's good development and good coaching. And I think that's what they do really well. Um, I do want to make a point about this game, though, and Kenny mentioned it in his post-game press conference on Saturday about how in the world is Utah coming off of a bye week and ASU is playing on a short week. That is ridiculous by the schedule, people. Um, I ch- like, how do you do that? Like, it, especially with a team coming into the season that was ranked last in the conference versus a team that was picked first. Like, I don't think ASU can really get a gauge of where they're at in this game just because they're going to Utah comes into this game with a tremendous advantage to to start off. Now, I think ASU can still win this game, but Utah comes in with a tremendous advantage. I think it is ridiculous that the way this game was scheduled and whoever scheduled it if in in the Big 12 needs to, you know, explain why this was a thing. It's it's ridiculous. Um, Utah comes into this game second among FBS teams in time of possession. ASU not far behind at 19, but what that means, Damon, is that ASU cannot get antsy. When they get the ball, they don't need to try and do too much. They got to make sure that they are really you know, trying to establish the one run in this game. That's something that Arizona did in the last game that Utah played and lost. Arizona had 161 yards rushing, averaged 5.4 yards per carry. Um, They had two rushers go over 70 yards. 30 times they touched the ball. ASU has the rushing attack to 
compete with that type of production uh, in terms of 30 carries, five, over five yards of carry. ASU, obviously with Cam Scadaboo, who had over 150 yards again last week, needs to try and give him the rock and you know have him waste some time on the clock as well, as that's what Utah tries to do. Yeah, and Kyle Whittingham has talked about Sam Levitt as a, like a true dual threat quarterback, which I think to this point, I can't name many FBS quarterbacks that are like far and away more of a dual threat than Sam. I think he's been up there with some of the best of the runners at quarterback this year. Um, obviously not the best, but um, what he's shown as a redshirt freshman is really incredible. And when you pair that with Scat, it's like a really strong run game. And if you can get anyone else outside of that too, uh, whether it be DeCarlos Brooks, potentially a, a Relic Brown appearance, we don't know if we'll get that this week. But um, yeah, ASU should be able to run the ball well like they have been all year. I mean, the offensive line is coming off its best game yet. Uh, and I guess we're bearing the lead a little bit. Who's going to be Utah's quarterback? Um, I, I mean, I talked about that earlier, but now let's get a little bit more in depth about it. Cam Rising was spectacular to start the season, and then unfortunately before the first half was over against Baylor, he was out of the game after crashing into some Gatorade bottles. What I noticed from watching a little bit of that game, Jesse, I I just went back and watched a little bit, Utah was going to win by like 40-plus points if Cam Rising kept playing in that game. They ended up not scoring again after Cam Rising went out of the game. Still won 23-12, to I believe. Yep, 23-12 to was the final score. Cam Rising uh, finished the game 8 for 14, 92 yards and two touchdowns. That led, that, that led Utah in passing that game. He was remarkable in the first two one and a half games this season and unfortunately he's been out ever since for utah yeah cam rising to me coming into the season was my heisman trophy pick he's a seventh year senior super experienced um even when he's been out with injury you know he's in the facility he's still learning um i i really think that he has been uh, the cream of the crop as far as like college qbs go I, he was my pick to win the Heisman with just his experience. And then you saw him get off to a very good start. Yes, the first game was against Southern Utah. Um, but, you know, you go into a Big 12 uh, game. It wasn't a Big 12 game. It was a non-conference Big 12 game <laughs> uh, because it had been previously scheduled before they went the, that Utah went to the Big 12. But, you know, he, he looked great in that game again. So... Um, Seven touchdowns, zero interceptions, 346 yards so far this season in one and a half games. Yeah, in one and a half games. And, and really I, just two halves. Yeah, yeah, really two halves. Yeah, really, because I don't believe he played in the second half of the Southern Utah game. So if he's back for Utah, it's going to be really hard for Arizona State to win this game. Now, if he's not back, then you're talking about Isaac Wilson, who is a true freshman. Um, he is not cam rising he's just not cam rising i don't i would say he's not even close to cam rising um he is a he's been fine at times for a college qb and then at times as dame and i were talking about off the off the podcast before and show prep uh woof sometimes with him woof but what he does do is he tries to read the field and as a true freshman that is not something you see very often he does try and pick out single coverage, give his receiver a chance. He doesn't throw into double coverage very much, but when he does, it's not good. And so I I, I don't see him scrambling out of the pocket very much. ASU should try and get to him. Obviously, uh, they have some issues in terms of missing two of their best defensive players in the first half of this game. So if Isaac Wilson plays, it's going to be tough to get pressure on him. But that, is, I think, is a big key to this game. If Isaac Wilson does play, ASU's got to try and get pressure on the true freshman in a big game Friday night. Going to be a lot of ASU fans. Going to be hot. Hopefully, if ASU can get pressure on the kid, they can win this game. Now, if Rising plays, Damon, I don't know what to expect in terms of are we going to see the quarterback that started the season with seven touchdowns, zero interceptions, 62% passing, 346 yards. Are we going to see some rust? 
So here's what I make of the rising situation. Obviously, we talked about the stark contrast between Cam and Isaac. With rising, you've got arguably the best quarterback in the country. And with Wilson, you've got the youngest quarterback that ASU has played this season. So it's a huge difference. Let me break it down. Kyle Whittingham said that there's a chance that Rising plays, but they don't have the go-ahead yet from the medical staff. That's what they've been waiting on. It's been a game-time decision for like four weeks, and a lot of the conversation has been he just can't get the velocity because the injury is on his throwing hand. It was a dislocation and a deep laceration that required stitches. The stitches are out now, but still not getting the velocity. Um, Also notably, Whittingham said that he would support mandatory injury reports, if they existed in the Big 12. Obviously, the Big 10 and the SEC has them, but the Big 12 doesn't yet. He said, why, if there's not one mandatory, why would I tip my hand either way? And Kenny told me today, he's totally right for that. Like, there's no reason Kyle should tip his hand. If they can get a competitive advantage, they should. Kenny also said he would support injury reports. But yeah, in terms of the transparency, that's where we're looking at. I think that if I had to put money on it right now, I don't think Cam Rising plays. That's just the the feel I'm getting from the Utah media people and all that. I feel like that, like, even if he doesn't have velocity on his throws, though, I feel like he might still give them a better chance to win than Isaac Wilson. Decision-making-wise, you mean? Decision-making-wise and just, like, he's a presence. Like, he's Cam Rising. He's the seventh-year senior. He's, you know, arguably the greatest quarterback in program history i mean you could argue alex smith but alex smith played in the mountain west and you know cam risings played in the pac-12 and now uh the big or should play in the big 12 at some point he's played Uh, a big 12 opponent this year yes (laughs) that's that's what i'm saying it's like i i think that and i don't know how hard throws have to be in college football I don't know. I think it's. I think it's an. It's interesting... up to the medical staff. They say. Yeah, I, I think it's an interesting strategy, though. Like, if if the medical staff is like, okay, he can play with, uh, a you know so, sort of Dis- bad finger, then like I think he he should go. But again, I think it helps ASU if he doesn't. So. Do you expect some like same question that I asked to Damon? Do you expect some rest from him? No, because he came back off of a knee of a torn ACL. It was amazing. <laughs> like he he this guy is really good. Like I can't overstate how good he is. The reason why ASU should be worried either way though is because Utah's defense is no joke. Yeah, Utah the, 16th in the country. Yeah. So I either way ASU it shouldn't matter who they're playing at quarterback. They need to get points on offense. And that's a tough task against this Utah defense. Utah key players, let's talk about them real quick. Running back, uh, Makai Bernard, 82 carries, 547 yards, a rushing touchdown, and a receiving touchdown. He's averaging a career high, 109 yards per game. Pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad, guys. It's not it's quite a, it's Cam not, Scadaboo, Yeah, I was but... <laughs> just about to say that. <laughs> it's not Cam Scadaboo. You're right. Also doesn't have near the amount of touchdowns that Cam does yeah. this season. Um, he's... Not really a receiving threat. He does have that one receiving touchdown. I believe he has six catches for six yards. It's not bad. <laughs> but not. it's not good. Uh, Brett Keithy, uh, Brant Keithy, excuse me, 17 receptions, 269 yards, and four touchdowns. Um, he suffered a torn ACL and meniscus against ASU in 2022. Do you remember that? Barely. It was, I believe, in the corner of the end zone um, at uh, then Sun Devil Stadium. Mm, I think I remember. Yeah, so he's another seventh-year senior. you got to watch out for him. One of the best tight, tight ends in the country. Long lineage of great tight ends at Utah. Again, he's already got four touchdowns this season, so watch out for him. And, of course, Dor- Dorian Singer, 26 receptions, 359 yards, uh, formerly at U of A and USC. Um, he's good. He's very good. Um, can make contested catches and also can run with the best of them. So. He's a real athlete for sure. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, there's a couple other guys like, um, is it really Money P- Parks? Money Parks, yeah. I love that name. Yep. 14 receptions, 190 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Caleb Lohner, three receptions, 51 yards, three touchdowns. So all three of his receptions are touchdowns. Yeah. Former, former basketball player. <laughs> we were about to say the same thing. <laughs> ba- one of these basketball playing tight ends, as they like to call them, Antonio Gates, uh, you talk about Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham. 
Jimmy Graham, Antonio Gates. <laughs> um, and then Van Fillinger, he's a defensive end. Um, he has four sacks this season, two QB hits, and six hurries in five games. Offensive line's got to be good for ASU this week. But have another performance like they did last week. Very only good. two pressures against Kansas. Very, very good offensive line. Run performance. the dang ball. <laughs> I, I understand Run that. the dang I ball. That, but they probably are going to have to throw a little bit in this game because I think they're going to be down at some point. And it's, also seven-man boxes and things so, like yeah, that. So you can't get... You can't. But who breaks tackles the best in the country? In my opinion, it's Cam Scadaboo. <laughs> I, I understand that, Jeremy, and I, I don't know why you're banging on the the arms. So I can so get my point across. I, I, I get that. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, but I, I think that you got to get uh, Sam into a bit of a rhythm, just because of how he might have to throw late in the game. So stick to the run, but please throw a little bit, Jesse. I want to get your game predictions now. Okay, I'm going to make two game predictions that doesn't here. Count. You can't I do that. I downvote this. I'm going to do it. Sorry. I'm going to make two game predictions. It's two against one, though. Well, I don't... It's, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And if, if you got... Which, whichever one... Go ahead. Whichever one the audience, whichever one you guys want go to ahead. count as my official prediction, then go for it. Um, if Cam Rising plays, ASU loses this one 27 to 14. If uh, Isaac Wilson plays, ASU wins this one 17 to 14. Wow. Very low scoring. I will go um, ASU 31 and Utah 12. 12? That's not going to happen. And I do not see Cam Rising playing, like I said. They're not going to beat Utah by 19 points and also okay. score 31 points. I okay. I just don't think that's going to okay. Why do you believe that? That's what that? Here's what I think. Here's my question. Why do you believe that? Because I think that there's going to be a lot of one-on-ones in the secondary, and I think that it's going to be able to be something that they can attack. This was a preseason prediction, I think, as well for Damon. He's sticking to his guns. I'm proud of you. Thank you. That's not going to happen. It's okay. not going to happen. I, I agree. Either way, if Wilson plays or Cam Rising plays, I think ASU loses this game. And I think it's not going to be very close. What a downer. Yeah. Um, I think Utah's really good. And uh, Jesse, you brought it up. Sucks that the schedule makers made it like this. Short horrible. Week. Absolutely horrible. Uh, you, you, Might I say, you, yeah. there's another way to look at that, by the way. Utah's that been sitting rusty. on a loss for yeah. two weeks. They, ASU has the momentum of a really exciting win last week. I think that that can't be dismissed. But could have been be? sitting around stewing and being hungry for two weeks. Yeah. They want to get back out there. This, yeah. No, this is horrible. This okay. is ho- absolutely horrible, in my opinion. And I have a different opinion. I agree. We're I allowed agree. to have differing opinions. We're allowed to have differing opinions. And that's okay. That's good for the podcast, guys. Yeah. Um, we'll put you in a boxing ring. Peel we'll, back the curtain some more, Jeremy. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll put you guys in a boxing ring at some point. Um, <laughs> no, but I think ASU loses this one. Trump dance? No. <laughs> I was doing the uh, rock'em, sock'em robot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, Either way, ASU loses this game. I think it's going to be 35 to 21. Again, I think you guys are a little bit too many points. Just what did you say last week about that? You said too many points, and then what happened? It, you know, my predictions have been wrong. Guess what? Guess what? It was too. It I'm was. Gonna let you, I'm off the audience in on something. What, here. what time? What, what was the score at halftime, Damon? 14 uh, 14. There you go. Here. here I'm going to let the audience in points. on something. That's as many points as he has in this game. <laughs> Nobody really knows. That's the great thing about sports is that nobody really knows what the predi- what's going to happen. Will so, we ever predict a score correctly? Yes. It's happened before. On this podcast? I don't know, but <laughs> I'd have to go back, you know, uh, to the uh, Jake Anderson era or the Mitch Fereldis era. We could probably move on. <laughs> yeah. Jesse, tell me what's going on in Sun Devil Athletics. All right. Big one tonight at Desert Financial Arena. The Territorial Cup volleyball game, it's going to be at 7 p.m. It's going to be on ESPN+. Plus. ASU is up to number 13 in the rankings. Looking forward to this match. It's going to be fun. Yeah. The highest they've been ranked under J.J. Van Neal, 13. Crazy. At they're they're close to the Friend of the show. Then. Which, yeah. does that mean it's the highest in program history also? I, I'm probably. guessing no, because they just said the J.J. Van Neal era. They would have said, um, okay, probably, you know, pump it up even more. Uh, Mary Schroll, she's been she's been awesome. Uh, was named Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, let me tell you, if you haven't watched her, you gotta go because she's 
incredible to watch. And then uh, they beat Utah last week and swept number 20 BYU. So this team is really good. They're really fun. That's the I, I want to... I want to emphasize how fun this team is. They are so fun. They are fun. And uh, I think they're going to easily dispatch Arizona tonight at DFA. And in front of a ruckus crowd. We are expecting uh, probably the best crowd in program history tonight. Uh, I would say, yeah. That that is what we are hearing. All right. ASU Hockey now. They're 1-1-0. They beat Air Force 8-1 last Friday. And then kind of an unacceptable loss on... Saturday, they look were, ahead game. Yeah, they were up three to two in the final minute of the game. Air Force ties it, and then they go into overtime. Air Force wins. ASU cannot lose these kinds of games this year because they're in the NCHC. Again, we we went over that last podcast. You can go and look at that or, and watch that back. Not uh, really easy games. To yeah, be had. no easy games. Uh, or last preview podcast last week. Uh, Still, we're the top team, though, and the other teams receiving votes in this week's poll. Uh, this week is a huge, huge series. Might be the, I don't know if it's the biggest one ever in Tempe, but uh, it's a very, very big uh, hockey series. It's bef- It starts against Michigan. Number 10 Michigan's coming in. Uh, it starts at Friday at 3.30, so you can go to this game and then go to the football game, which we are going to do, uh, which is exciting. Um, and then they play Saturday at 5. That one is going to be on Fox 10 Extra Local TV. So you can watch that one or go to the game. Do you guys have any thoughts on hockey? I'm excited to learn about hockey this year. Good. Yeah. I don't really the, know about hockey. Again, it's the <laughs> highest uh, level of hockey. Damon with let's do that hockey. <laughs> yeah, let's do that hockey. <laughs> again, it's the highest level of hockey in the Valley at yeah. the moment. Um, so, yeah, go out and support the guys. It's going to be fun weekend against a really good Michigan team. If ASU can pull one of these two or even two out of these two away from Michigan, it would be big moving into, you know, more of the regular season games. I, I think they should really pre- – I'm not press, but – Really try to get two wins here because of the loss last week. All right, soccer. They are 7-3-3. Three, and three. Lost their last two out of three, and then they play Baylor on the road tomorrow. We'll update you on swimming and triathlon after the game on Friday because they don't have any events until we are done with the football game. So Spencer, I, I Spencer Torkelson, um, he got his second hit of the playoffs. He's been struggling of late. Uh, but he did uh, get two run or one uh, RBI. Yeah, big hit for Torque. A ribby for the Tigers. Hopefully, he gets his career going a little bit more. And then uh, former uh, former Valley resident Spencer Rattler starting for the. Uh, Why Saints. does that have anything to do with Arizona State? I think ASU fans are still salty that he didn't come to to ASU. So why are you bringing him up? I don't understand this. What's what's going on here? Are you salty? I'm not salty. I'm not salty. I, I don't. I I you know I'm an unbiased journalist. That's going to do it for the saltiest edition of State of the Sun Devils. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. You can follow us on all forms of social social media at AZ Sports Devils. Easy for me to say. You can find everything that Damon does on ArizonaSports.com and the Arizona Sports app. That is where you can get our podcast as well as watching almost every single episode on the Arizona Sports YouTube channel. For Jesse Morrison and Damon Allred, I'm Jeremy Schnell. We will talk to you on Friday. Yeah!